Hello, welcome to The Natter, brought to you each week by Cardiff Metropolitan University's Sport Broadcast MSc and Sport Media BSc. We'll be chatting to student athletes from the university about their experiences and challenges. In this week's episode, we speak to a group of students and staff from Ball State University in Indiana about their experiences during their transatlantic storytelling journey here in Wales, what they think of Cardiff Met, and they get quizzed on their Welsh knowledge. This week is a special episode. Since last Thursday, our friends from Ball State have been with us, collecting footage for the documentaries, and we thought it'd be interesting um, for us to compare our lifestyles, food, and sporting differences. Joining me for this special episode is Robert Wheeler. How are we? Yeah, very well, thanks. Um, just want to clarify, I'm actually English. I'm not Welsh. This I've is been studying here since uh, September, so I've lived here a while, but uh, I'm actually English just for to clarify that. <laughs> You're from London, aren't you? Uh, Originally, I'm from Hastings. Hastings. But I lived in London for four years. Yeah. Hastings. Sorry. Yeah. Um, but we're going to be comparing Welsh and American sporting differences. Well, UK, I guess, as well. Football mm. obviously has been played in in England. And t- today we have, well, for this for this segment we have CT, the program director. <laughs> hey, okay, guys, we're excited to be here. Yeah. And Ryan, <laughs> what's up? This is this is awesome. Incredible experience so far. This is even better too. Yeah. Just being on this podcast. Brilliant. And we just want a quick conversation with both of you got um, just to start us off and what have you been up to? I know you've been very busy, especially well, tomorrow, I think tomorrow's a big day, but uh, since Thursday, what have you guys what have you guys seen? Uh, that's a really loaded question just because we've seen a lot in a short span of time too. I mean, it's a long flight obviously overseas, but to be able to do the things we've already done so far, uh, we went to the cliffs a couple days ago. Uh, the Cardiff Castle was certainly amazing. We have nothing like that in the yeah. United States. Absolutely nothing like that. But the breathtaking views from the cliffs has certainly stood out to me the most and has been yeah. uh, one of the most amazing, uh, really jaw-dropping things that I've seen in my life so far, which is awesome. Yeah, the schedule has been um, just crazy in terms of the cultural experiences that we're getting, uh, the sightseeing that we're getting, and then also just the amazing quality time with with the students and uh, such as yourselves uh, and and Joe and Lucas, uh, the program directors, uh, and then just the student athletes at Cardiff Met as we're starting to to, to craft their stories and do that in a in, you know in a short window of time that we're here. Mm-hmm. But when you combine all those things in, it seems like it's nonstop. But what I told what I told these guys, it's it's ten days, and it's uh, ten days of going hard, uh, and it'll be memories that'll last a lifetime. And just how engaging the athletes have been with us, and in this little project and stuff, has been certainly amazing. And and how great everybody's been, how kind everybody's been, and how accommodating everybody's been has just been outstanding. We've been able to see a whole lot. We've been able to have enough time to put our cameras down and really take it all in, but also doing the work with with the terrific athletes here and being able to tell their stories. That's that's excellent news. That's that's nice hearing that. (laughs) Um, But the castles, you mentioned you went to see Cardiff Castle. Did you know that Wales has, has the most castles per kilometer squared mile in the world so it has the most castles for its you know geogra- geographical space in the world so mm-hmm. it's a f- few castles yeah. i had no idea <laughs> again I, nothing like that in the united <laughs> no, states no, there's no. nothing <laughs> i did know that only yeah. because i was here a year ago and okay. and uh you know had researched and, and saw those and been thankful enough to see a few of those already yeah uh, both a year ago and on this trip but uh yeah. It's uh yeah nothing like that as Ryan says. <laughs> yeah. the, the only United castle States. only castles are white castles <laughs> in, in the United States. Yeah, That's yeah. about it. Yeah. I don't know if you know what those are. But I don't know. What yeah, okay. White castles? It's a restaurant. That's oh, all okay. it is. Okay. So yeah, it's it's nothing like the Cardiff <laughs> Castle. <laughs> okay, they're quite well preserved as well. The castles here, like they yeah, well castles kept. in England, but all of them are less ruins really. Hmm. Uh, yeah, but anyway, moving on. You've you've been to a few stadiums, haven't you? Sporting sporting uh, arenas. Um, you started off in the Principality, I think, on Sunday. How was that? That's obviously a national stadium. You know that. I know. But uh, 
I think, it, well, it's a big stadium, isn't it? Just just huge. Yeah. I mean, we have our fair share of big stadiums in the U.S., but just how crazy it seems like people go for rugby yeah. uh, in this area of the world is just really impressive. And I was really impressed with that stadium, just gigantic. And I can't imagine, unfortunately, we can't see a game there mm. this trip because they're not home. But I can't imagine how rowdy it gets oh, it's at those games because that seems like a, just an incredible atmosphere. And I was just trying to kind of picture what it would be like. And it mm. seems like... You guys go yeah. really hard for rugby. Yeah, I saw you guys walking out to the to the crowd cheering, and on, on Twitter, I saw <laughs> yeah. that it was brilliant. Yeah, it was so good. Yeah, it was uh, the the atmosphere recreated was also like uh, heart thumping, and uh, it was an empty stadium. So to think about what that would be with seventy plus thousand folks mm. there, mm. Uh, and just the pride you have in your in your country and your sport. Yeah, uh, we saw a little bit of that at the. Uh, the uh, Cardiff FC game, yeah, uh, Cardiff City FC game, but uh, it was uh, Principality was amazing, yeah. very very nice. You guys need to um, have a look on Twitter and YouTube of, of um, our anthem getting sung before the games. Um, it's it's incredible. It's not nothing to, nothing like being there yourself, but the videos does have a, a fraction of that um, atmosphere. You need to, I'll, I'll show you that with you later. <laughs> but um, yeah, talking about Cardiff City, you, I think you had a training session in the morning, did you, before yeah, the game? Yeah, uh, that was... <laughs> might be CT, loosely, that CT. might be a loose description. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, we, we could have used more training, <laughs> yeah, I would say, at the, at the rate we were, we were playing, because we were not, uh, we were not exactly... Uh, football superstars out there on the pitch but and I know CT didn't participate in that and he just kind of watched but uh I mean we had uh, it was like a five or six versus six like match yeah. like it, it was fun though just being able to kick the ball around and I scored two goals I, I mean oh, I just I need to good. brag a little bit yeah but uh yeah I had a good day that, <laughs> that was fun uh, and being able to learn different things too that that was an incredible day too yeah. um, it, it, every day so far has just been amazing and, and an amazing experience uh, ending from itself really brilliant yeah the it was the bluebird experience I yeah. think was part of what we did so um, went to the, uh, the training center at the house of sport right mm -hmm. next door to the stadium uh, Coach Gary Gazaz, I think is his name, okay. uh, was brilliant, was excellent. Uh, many, many years of coaching soccer uh, and really like took our, our guys and gals through a, uh, a mini workout uh, yeah. Yeah. in terms of, uh, you know, uh, attacking and goals and, and shots and how to do that and how to pass and how to set and all the different things. Uh, and then after that, we had a, a good little lunch and then we were inside uh, pitch side yeah. uh, for a game that was certainly exciting i mean it was it was great just to to get a, a sense of what you were talking about with a full stadium and 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 the, and the chantings and the songs and, mm. and the anthems and those things it was uh it was something I, I won't forget for sure yeah super cool super, super cool. cool very few things like that if anything like that in america too i mean just just how uh, obsessed people are with sports in a way is just truly awesome and, and amazing <laughs> yeah well you well, I could listen about your experiences because it opens an eye, really, about what I have. Well, what both of us have around us, and we probably take it for granted a bit, don't we? When you think about all the castles and the stadiums and well, the weekly games we have around us, we need to we need to get down to Cap City soon. I think and watch a game ourselves. I think yeah, I've been in a while. Like, football is massive, and like seeing you guys being like, like, what's it like for you, like back home with football, like and soccer, soccer as you call it. What's your experience? Did you play much it's, as growing up? Or no, it's, it? it's no. not as it's bigger. I would say in CT. I mean, I'm curious to what you think too about this. I think it's bigger among women mm. because our national team, our women's national team, is really good. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. in the last couple World Cups, they've been really good. I think it's definitely bigger uh, as sort of a women's sport. Uh, the men's side of things is still kind of growing. I mean, the MLS, Major League Soccer, yeah. uh, in our country, it's still kind of gaining ground, I think. It's really not that old of a league. I mean, it's probably one of the youngest professional leagues. I think it's leagues. 20 years old. Yeah, think, something, yeah, I think it's celebrating its yeah. 20th year, yeah. actually, this yeah. year. Uh, but I know it's it's growing a little bit, and I'm from Chicago, so the Chicago Fire, they moved uh, back to Soldier Field where they started uh, hoping to get more a bigger crowd there at their games. 
Uh, I know Atlanta, they like have, they play in their football stadium that seats probably over 70,000, 70, 80,000, and they almost come close to selling out. If not, really? they do sell out. Uh, so I think it's still kind of growing. And I know the younger players across the country are, are starting to play it more often. But I'd say definitely on the woman's side of things, yeah. it, it's gotten bigger and bigger with how much success the United States has had. Yeah. Yeah, definitely from from that standpoint. And in the college world, I I think it's also growing in terms of college athletics in in the United States and the NCAA. Um, You're seeing a lot of women's teams that are very, very successful. Uh, And then there's a a good chunk of men's teams as well. Um, But I think in the United States at the collegiate level, um, you're more likely to see a women's soccer team added uh, versus a men's soccer team. Uh, for Title IX and other reasons that are that are in the United States, but uh, soccer is growing uh, for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Football, in your terms, uh, is growing for sure. We have a uh, a professional team uh, about forty five minutes away from us called the Indy Eleven, uh, and then certainly the uh, different cities. Uh, Nashville is about to add a MLS team. Several cities are adding MLS teams, and I think that's just a, a result of a, it. Truly, is growing, but I, it it won't. It won't. It won't reach the level that you guys have yeah, in the United hard. States because yeah. it's just part of your heritage and your history, right? Yeah. Uh, but it's good. It's growing and it's fun. To, it's fun to attend. Yeah, we're looking forward to talking with the other guests later on about sporting differences and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But we'll move on to the last part of uh, our first section of this mm-hmm. podcast. This and is going to be yeah. good, Ryan. <laughs> Here think, we go. Yeah, I think you know what's coming. Um, <laughs> well, we have a little game, and it's going to be between Ryan and CT here. And um, well, actually. Do you, do you want to have a go as well? Because you're not Welsh speaking, are you? From an English perspective. We'll okay. add Robin as well. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like now the, now we're disadvantaged. A little bit. But it's okay. I mean, as long okay. as we're on the same level, yeah. which we are. Yeah, we'll or should we keep yeah. it between two? Yeah. No, no, let's do it. No, come let's on, Robin. Let's, let's bring it let's, in. Let's, come on. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> the, the list of Welsh place names is on my phone here, on my notes. Mm-hmm. And one by one. So Rob first, then CT, then Ryan are going to have a go at pronouncing the the place name. And, um, well, I know how to pronounce it, so <laughs> I'll correct you. <laughs> and I'll, I'll score well, you. Well, you go first. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and I'll correct you and give a point to the best um, pronunciation. Okay. So um, we'll start off with the first one. And yeah. uh, Rob can... Uh, oh, just reading off your phone. Yeah, just okay. the first one. Okay, so I know the... Okay. Here we go. Hlanadui Breffi. That's not bad. So go for. You need like almost half a pint of phlegm in your mouth. To, like, <laughs> so CT next. All right, let's, uh, let's see you over here. That's what you said, the first word? <laughs> wow. Hlanadui <laughs> Breffi. That's not bad. That's, that's a good effort. And... Ryan to see the, the <laughs> thing that helps me is that these guys went before me, so I have somewhat of a basis, yeah. you know, to go off of. <laughs> if I was the first one to go, you, the, can, you can be first next time. No. Oh, well, <laughs> well, thank you. I'm flattered. <laughs> oh. See, it's it's this double the double L is yeah. what is what's so so hard. Yeah. Clen Dewey Breffy. It's a really good effort. Really? It's Slam Dewey Brevi, and it sounds really wow. similar to what Ryan just said. So, so did I get it? Yeah. yeah. yeah I get the point? Ryan? Oh, oh how amazing. about that? Am I starting with it? Or? Yeah, okay. Actually, now, but, now let's see. Oh, it. <laughs> okay, okay. Slam yeah. Dewey Brevi, the place uh, Ryan's just pronounced perfectly, basically, is, um, well, it was our national day on Sunday, uh, well, Wales' yeah. national day, and that is the location where Dewey Sant, uh, our saint, came from. So Slam Dewey Brevi. So it was a bit of context there for you. Wow. Very but, cool. But uh, go ahead with the second name. Okay. Uh, Castel Nuid Emlyn. Good effort. Good effort. Wow. All right. Castel Nuid Emlyn. Yeah. Really good effort. Uh, go on, Rob. Okay. To finish it off. <laughs> Castel Nuid Emlyn. Yeah. That's not bad. It's Castel now with Emlyn. And all of you said it. Pretty close. Pretty close. So I'll give a, a point for all of you. So yes. it's two oh, one. Yeah. I'll take that. Um, I'll I'm going to be kind. <laughs> It's um, good. Yeah, it's just a town in West Wales, uh, Castleton with Emlyn in Carmarthenshire. But um, the next one, Background. I'll start with Rob. Oh, Jesus. Mac- Mackinleth? Mackinleth, okay. Yeah. <laughs> mm, CT's turn. Oh, here it comes, yeah. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> M- 
Mac and the Lith. That's good. That's good. And Ryan to finish. Mac and the Lith. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> change it up just to see, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I think I'm going to give that to Rob. Thank you. Um, it was similar between CT and Rob, but I think it's Machenleth. Yeah. Um, just a bit of context as well. This is Wales' old capital city. Um, that's where our last actual Welsh prince, Owen Glyndwr, held his parliament about 800 years ago. Wow. Um, it's in mid Wales, about two and a half hours ago uh, away. Sorry, <laughs> and uh, that's where I um, went to high school. That's oh, where nice. I. That's where nice. I nice. So uh, <laughs> Machenleth. Machenleth. Okay. Fourth one, no. Well, Rob to start. <laughs> Din bitch, ye please God. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if anyone was offended by that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Din bitch, il peace God. That's good. That's, That's good. not probably right at all. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking at it. Oh, goodness. Uh, Din bitch, il Piscard. Okay, so the three different, three different. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's how you get points, right? Yeah, if we all said it. the same thing, yeah, like, yeah. Like, like, what's the point? It's uh, Dimbicha Puscod, and um, I think CT takes that okay. one. Oh, so, okay, so uh, well I done. It's it a good pronunciation yeah. by him, but I th- I've lost count of the scores now. I think it's two, two, one, two, two, one for two, two, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah two yeah. for Ryan, two for CT, and one for. Englishman Rob. <laughs> um, the fourth one. Um, no, sorry, we just had the fourth one. The last one. Oh, and no. Yeah, oh, no. Just, I thought it was a typo. <laughs> well, it's... Um, I, I, I was about to say it out, but it's not... Uh, <laughs> it, it, Please do. <laughs> this um, little village is in North Wales um, on the island of Anglesey, and it's the longest name for a village in Europe. It holds a record. It's the longest place name in Europe. We heard this on the Principality Stadium tour, by the way. Oh, he said it, yes. yeah. It is a tongue twister. I mean, a lot of people can't say it. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't write down the phonetic uh, saying of it, CT, while we were on the tour. <laughs> they could have could have come in handy yeah, here, but... Uh, oh, oh boy, <laughs> for this Have a one. go, have a go. Uh, Lenfen... Wilflen... Lodger... Lim this like go. I yeah, look. <laughs> that I, was a good answer. You yeah. can't say I didn't try. Oh. <laughs> uh, Hold on. Yeah, let me read it through, <laughs> through my mind a few times here. Lim fer pelig gani flagrichen dralchen logichkach. Okay, okay. That's two different, yeah. two different ways there. <laughs> no <laughs> pressure. Correct, but. <laughs> Like, why is it so long? Is it for like <laughs> tourism or something? No, or no, it's it's, it's actually, a, that's its actual name. If you break it down, there's little meanings inside it, but okay. uh, we won't go. That's a history lesson. Okay, here we go. Lanfair will queen goggle cho twin drop will lands this goggle goggle cho. Okay. Wow. That was wow. Good. Shall I tell you how it's pronounced? Please. Lanfair will queen get go get a queen drop will land the silio go go go. Oh. Um. But I'm not sure who who was the closest. I I think he was the closest. Thank yeah, you. do you think Thank Rob? You. We yeah. should try it again. Let's try it again. Have another um, go. So. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's go for it. Okay. Say say it one more yeah, time. Yeah. I'll say it slower Just, as well. So it's. Llanvair pull gwingill go ger chwindrobus llandesilio go go go. Llanflev plantin lancher chindrobrel. Lendlitz, Lizzo, go, go, go. Uh, the last bit is good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the go, 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 I go, get. Go, go, go. <laughs> yeah, I got that down. Lenfra, Grin, Fluglich, Schwinn, Bull, Lan, Jish, Go, go, go. Okay. Yeah, that was good. That was strong. It was much better than the first time around. It's going to be difficult. Like the way Daffy said it, it's so smooth. It's almost like a song when you think of it. Lenfra, Pull, Gwyn, Glog, Chew, Chew, Drob, Will, Lan, Dis. Go, go, go. Oh, Everyone okay. nails the go, go, go. Yeah. Don't they? yeah. <laughs> but I'm giving it to CT. Oh, yeah. I would, I would. <laughs> so well done, it. CT. Yeah. yeah, I think it rounds up CT three, Ryan two, yeah. and Robbo on one. Yes. But uh, <laughs> thanks for taking part, guys, and yeah. it's been great chatting awesome. with you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank Everybody's you been right. awesome. Yeah. This has been awesome. Thank you. Love you guys. Thank you. Second pair of guests we have is Dylan. How are we? Good, how are you? 
Very good, thank you. And Corey? Yeah, I'm all right, thank you. Brilliant. Thanks for having me. Appreciate oh, having me on. Yeah, thanks for having, well, coming on, even. Um, I'm going to dive straight into it. I think we're going to be talking about the difference in sports. I know rugby has been compared with um, Amer- well, football, American football. Yes. yes. Um, cricket and baseball has been chucked around. I don't think we have a comparison for netball over here. For, yeah, I we? mean, basketball is the only thing, but you guys have basketball. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we do. But, um, well, you've, you went to the Swedek this morning, this, um, the cricket stadium. Yeah. Yes. Did you enjoy that? It's a lot different to like if, because like we said, the closest comparison we have is baseball. Yeah. Um, it's a lot different to like the normal like baseball ground, like the baseball stadiums like I've been to, like I think Dylan's been to. It, it's, like I said, it's just very different. It feels kind of like if you took a soccer stadium and a baseball stadium and just kind of put them together. Yeah. It's quite open, isn't it? Yes. And the, the Swaylek, the one you went to this morning, is quite open. I can imagine, well, as I've seen on television, baseball stadiums are a bit more compact and um, there's a bit more stands, if you like. Um, you fit more in in a baseball. Right, well, well, in baseball, you only have one way you can hit, yeah. the, hit the ball. Um, so I think that's maybe why the cricket uh, field stadium, whatever yeah, you yeah. call it, um, is it, so unique because you can hit the ball 360 degrees. Into the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you need to go check out some videos of cricketers smashing the balls into pint glasses. And they, they, when, they, when they get good meters and yard, yardage on the on the on the on the hit yeah absolutely and it's a hard ball as well so yeah. it is uh tough like there's yeah. a few compilations on youtube of them smashing pint glasses in the crowd and hitting people on the head it's quite mm. funny you need to go check that out the second Rugby pair of then. guests we and have is me- um football do you think it's similar of what of what you've gathered or i would i would say that rugby is american football without pads basically correct uh both very so. gritty um dirty um, just wild men just going at each other, trying to tear each other's heads off, yeah. basically. I would say the difference, for me at least, that I've seen, it's like if you just, there was no stoppages of play in our football. It's like, because in American football, you have set play, so it's like you have first down, second down, third mm-hmm. down, where you, you stop the play and then you start another one. But it's, it seems like rugby just put the pedal to the metal and it's just nonstop for the whole time. I mean... It's a wild game, man. Yeah. There's also four downs in, in American football, but rugby, you just go, right? You just yeah. Play? yeah, you, you just go, out, go I at think it. You, well, you, there's no limit on how many times you can um, attack, if you mm-hmm. like. Um, I, I watch a bit of American football now and again. Obviously, Super Bowl is... And, oh, who, who doesn't watch that if you're a sporting fan? But uh, I do watch... I follow the Redskins, which is not good. They, yeah, rough team a, now. Yeah, yeah, they're going oh, through man, a bad patch. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was okay, but... Um, it's more tactical, isn't it, American football? What, yeah. You've got an attack, and um, it's very tactical orientated. Well, in rugby, you all, all the same players play defense and offense, right? Yeah. So, I mean, just from that, in, in American football, you have 11 that play on the offensive side, 11 that play on the defensive side. So they're specifically crafting their talents on one specific side of the ball. Yeah. But then you're also, by the same token, you have coaches that will see how teams play like what type of offense they'll run, and then they'll specifically craft their defense to try to stop to that. To match that, okay. Yeah, and then by the same token, you'll have offenses that see how certain defenses play, and they'll see like, all right, they've left, like the middle linebacker's not here, so we can attack the middle of the field. Or their safety likes to drop inside, so we'll go over the top. Like it's it's very much a game of chess. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Um, have you watched any American football, Rob? Or? Nah, not really, to be honest. I've never been into it. Like, I've got a few mates like yourself who have got into it, but for me, I've never got into it. I've seen it a couple of times, but never watched a full game. Mm. It's mm. too stop-start for me, if I'm honest. And, uh, yeah, being English, I just never... I, I watch proper football. Not, uh, <laughs> Soccer. Not American yeah, proper. Football, sorry, but yeah. Something I want to go on to, because um, I've been discussing with Joe and stuff, and you thought that um, during... You've been to Cardiff City. We just spoke with CT and Ryan about that. Um, you thought that they could do more, as in the Cardiff City, Bluebirds could do more pre-match, mid-match, post-match entertainment. Do you think so? I feel like, I mean, I... This is coming from someone who's actually a massive yeah, you know, yeah. British football fan, a massive Liverpool fan. I've, I feel like you you could. There's definitely a bit of pageantry and spectacle in every American sport. Like you see it in football and basketball, you see it all the time. Um, I feel like it makes it more of a show than a game. And I feel like once you kind of combine the two, it's just an entertainment spectacle all throughout. And I think that's something that like maybe football is missing that there's mm-hmm. like that entertainment and showmanship to the game that yeah. might be missing uh it's definitely something that makes it you want to stay in your seat the whole time because you don't know what you're gonna miss yeah um but but also with with 
football or soccer, um, you, you're playing 45 straight minutes and you don't really have those in between times That's to true. get out there. Um, and to, I mean, to be fair, the, the way that football is looked at um, internationally is just such a high spectacle of a sport. I don't know if yeah. extra entertainment is, is needed to, to drive ticket sales and things that's, like that. That's another good point. But then we go in down the route of is sports turning into a business and all that. So we, we yeah. won't go too much into it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, well, I think in England, uh, Britain, uh, especially like football is very like sort of traditional. And uh, it's there's the sort of things that work in America that don't work so much here. So I think... When it's too like commercial and clubs are sort of becoming businesses rather than clubs and supporters are becoming uh, customers rather than actual fans, I think that's when sort of really like hardcore fans really like get at their clubs for. And I, I don't think it would work in so much. In this sort of like country. when, uh, sort of like when MK Dons bought out Wimbledon and moved the club. Yeah, like, exactly like that because that was at Wimbledon FC and yeah. uh, the owners moved it up to Milton Keynes and. The supporters, it's now AFC Wimbledon, the new team, versus MK Dons is a massive rivalry, one of the biggest, because of what their owner did to them. Probably the pinnacle of Welsh sport, um, well, the pinnacle of uh, uh, rugby, especially in Welsh sport every year, is Wales versus England. Um, um, and obviously, we'll get into the chat now, yeah. but <laughs> you're going to be here Saturday for the game. Um, and I'm I'm glad you, you'll be here, even though it's not played in Cardiff. It's play, being played in Twickenham in London, but um, it's still going to be bonkers on yeah. Saturday. Oh, yeah. Whenever I found out that we were going to be watching a match in a pub downtown, it, it's probably one of the top things I've been looking forward to, just to be in that environment. Yeah, and well, Rob, let's start off with you. Don't think it's as big as an occasion as I us think Welsh it people. It definitely means more to Welsh people than it does English people. Growing up for me, more of a football fan. Uh, the, our rivalries were obviously Germany, uh, Argentina, probably Scotland, Wales. To be honest, they weren't really that relevant with all due respect until maybe 20, Euro 2016 yeah. where you started to see uh, Wales do well, got to the semi-finals, the passion of them. Yeah. remember them celebrating when, Engl when England went out, unfortunately. Yeah. And um, since coming down here, I was a bit surprised about how sort of uh, and passion it, it, how anti-English Welsh people mm. are and their passion is something that's great mm -hmm. and uh, it's something that sort of rubbed off on me because yeah. now I can't wait for the game on Saturday yeah and it, watching it, like whenever England play Wales or I I thought I'd come here and have sort of an affiliation for Wales that I'd like to see them do well but quite the opposite now <laughs> the way well, Welsh people are against English people and uh, I mean Euro's coming up like I'm you're looking forward to it yeah I'm gonna support sort of support uh the team facing Wales Do like yeah. like uh, like you guys support whoever's playing England I yeah. Think. yeah well it's not a secret whoever uh, well yeah, any Welshman would say England is the biggest rivalry and it's going to be an eye opener for for you guys who um, will be down in whatever pub you'll be uh, make sure to wear red um, yeah, for sure and uh, learn the anthem quickly <laughs> <laughs> but um, no I'm sure it'll be great um, I, I oh it's not going to be played in the stadium but it'll be played in Twickenham as I just said but um the anthem uh, will be played, and you'll whatever you'll be, uh, everyone will be singing. Um, there'll be a lot of beer consumed. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. The and, atmosphere um, is unbelievable. Like, I've grown up; it was never really a big thing. Like rugby, Six Nations, where I'm from, really. There are people who do love rugby, but for me, it wasn't really a thing. But I haven't missed a rugby weekend now. I've always been in the pub with my Welsh friends, my English yeah. friends, and it's been great. And the atmosphere, like you're in the pub there, and it's almost. So just such a party atmosphere and it's it's just unbelievable i can't wait for the any rugby weekends and absolutely brilliant um we'll finish off the chat then we'll jump into a quiz are you boys ready um it's a welsh american true or false quiz oh man <laughs> well at least we're 50 percent then yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um i've got i think i've got five questions one two three four five questions um and we'll play just both of them against each other. It's going to be a point each. So I'm going to name you five celebrities or well-known American people. And um, it's the question is, do they have a Welsh connection? Do they have Welsh relatives? Are they have, uh, do, okay. are they past right. relatives Welsh or not? Um, the first name is Barack Obama. Was he, does he have Welsh heritage? Uh. I, I will say that that is not true, so false. I'll okay. say it's false as well. Okay. Um, that's true. I'm going to go straight in. That's wow. true. Wow. Um, <laughs> I thought you threw us a softball at first. Yeah, so well, did I. I. I chucked it in deliberately to start off with because I was surprised as well. Um, 
I think he was born in Honolulu. Or did he go to university in Honolulu, Hawaii? Yeah, he's from yeah. Yeah, or Hawaii, yes, yes, yes. Um, because I knew that. That's common knowledge. I mean, he, you know, any president um, of, of 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 America, people know about him. But mm-hmm. um, it says here on Google, his six times great grandparents, Henry and Margaret Perry, emigrated to ha- Ohio from Anglesey at the beginning of the 19th century. Wow, <laughs> I had no idea. Barack <laughs> yeah. Obama is Welsh. There he is. Yeah. The second one, because we'll have to start thinking now because if Barack Obama is Welsh, yeah, who I know. else could be? Right. Tom Cruise is the second name. Is he Welsh or not? Oh, not Welsh, but has Welsh connections. Hmm. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, the strategy is to just say false to you get one right, right? <laughs> it's very, yeah, that's, that's, that's very true. Um, yeah, I'm going to go true. So Dylan goes true. Corey, what are you thinking? I'll say false. I say he doesn't. Um, I just thought of a name and he oh. is false he yes. is false he, there's yeah, no should connections have, should with have Tom stuck Cruise. my original strategy <laughs> um, the third one I think one of his songs was sang in the karaoke in live lounge on Sunday oh boy is Taylor Swift oh. Welsh no straight up Dylan with a, with a false I'll say she, she I think she has Welsh roots so Corey goes true just to remind yourselves Corey's 1-0 up he, he got the last one right yes Correct. I did so um, Taylor Swift has distant Welsh ancestry yes <laughs> So we're claiming her as well. She's Welsh as well. <laughs> Two I nil. Let's be Welsh because Welsh are known for their singing. So yeah, she's That's Welsh. Fair, she yeah. can <laughs> sing. But the next one, Madonna. Do you think she's Welsh or not? Oh, you're like, scratching your heads, your <laughs> <laughs> tongues and cheeks. Here. <laughs> you're sweating. <laughs> if I get if I get anything about Madonna wrong, my mom would be very upset about me or upset with me. She's a huge Madonna fan. Um, I'll say she does. Dylan goes false, and false is correct. Oh, Your mum's right. not going to be Still happy, Corey. Dang. So we're two one, and right. um, the last one. Shall we go double, double or nothing? So yeah, give, give me a chance. chance. Let's give him a chance to win. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Double or nothing here, and the name is Abraham Lincoln. Does he have Welsh ancestry? Oh, sixteenth uh, prime minister, I think. I um, believe. President, yeah. President, born, sorry, born in Indiana. Was yeah. he? Yeah. Born oh, you in, should know about him. Born in Indiana. My area, even. Yeah. Yeah, down in southern Indiana, where he's from. You have the lead, so you go ahead. Oh, that yeah. come on now, no, Dylan. I'll say he does. Okay. I was gonna go false, so yeah, false. No. Okay. Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln, the great man, had Welsh ancestry yeah. by the yes! bucket load. Lincoln's great great grandfather John Morris was a farmer in a spotty Ivan in North Wales. His daughter Ellen emigrated to the United States with a group of um, people. Then there she married Cadwallader the Evans. So yes, she does. Yes. Great great grandfather. Well done, Dylan. Good That's game. Good. So I think that Corey took it four, four to one. one. Yeah. Give me one. Give me one. <laughs> well, thank you, boys. It's been great chatting. Yeah, I appreciate you. having Cheers. us on, man. Appreciate it. Cheers. So we have Jordan and Rachel, our next guests. And um, we were just talking about podcasts, weren't we? Yeah, we were. What, yeah. what sort of podcasts do you listen to, Rachel? I listen to crime podcasts. Oh, okay. Interesting. So, I can't listen to them past about nine o'clock at night if I'm driving or if I'm just sitting in my room. Um, they're a little scary for me, but I enjoy <laughs> listening to them. They like make the time go by. Yeah. And Jordan, you were saying you, were, you listen to The Office. Podcast. Yeah, it's called The Office Ladies. Yeah, they talk about the episodes and what's like their memories around them and what kind of things they can find and pick out in the episodes. Like, oh, look at that in the background, like that type of thing. Oh. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. So. Oh, it's cool. Any sports ones you guys listen to? Um, I mean, I listen to the one Sportslink does, so mm. like The Surge and stuff like that. Some of our students do some podcasts, but I don't listen to like any um, like actual sport ones, like out about actual sports. I should, probably should. I yeah. probably should. Yeah. My, that might be something. Calls, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you listen to podcasts? Yeah, mostly like the Peter Crouch one. Obviously, our course mate Gareth has quite a funny one. Uh, Goalposts for jumpers, but. Guardian Football Weekly, sports ones, yeah. And I'm the same with yeah. rugby. I yeah. listen to about four, five, six podcasts. No we've been, way. Yeah, yeah just, just about rugby. Wow. 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 Time. Yeah. <laughs> just on the bus, so if I'm walking, yeah. Yeah, yeah. half an hour, hour each. Mm. But, oh. um, yeah, well, too much time maybe. But uh, <laughs> the weather, we're going to be talking about the weather with you, um, okay. both of you. Um, I think, if I'm right saying, that you've had basically the whole package since coming to Wales. You've had hail. Yes. Rain. Mm-hmm. Yep. Sun. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Windy. Oh and yes. But much, no yeah. snow yet. You've nearly had the pull back. You know, we have the snow back in Indiana though, so it's okay if that never comes. <laughs> I think okay. we're okay with that. You know, within thirty minutes of filming the other day, we had snow, 
No, we didn't have snow. We had hail. Hail. We had sun. We had rain and a lot of wind. And yeah. it was like big hail too. Like where, at least for me, like I, that, that's hail. not yes. like <laughs> pelted. That's not like common. Like no. in Muncie. I don't think I've seen hail. I guess I looked outside once and it was hailing, but nothing like being pelted with hail. Yeah. yeah. Like that was we crazy. get hail in Indiana mm. and it can get big like sometimes, but in general, it's just really small. Yeah. But the hail we were getting hit with here yeah, was that. like kind of big. Have you seen those? clips on internet on facebook of those like snowball hail balls yes. Yes. in mass on windscreens like, cracking yes. windscreens that's crazy breaking yeah. windshields yeah like Scary size of baseballs stuff. tennis yeah. balls yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's, that's crazy yeah. but you might get some snow up on penavan the mountain you're claiming on friday yeah so we heard that be prepared so yeah. you might you you might yeah. get the full package if you when you when you're leaving on Sunday. i have a yeah. feeling we will yeah i have a feeling do you know what? it wouldn't be the welsh experience if they if they would not get the whole package <laughs> yeah, of the weather package. you guys genuinely have been quite lucky with the weather just to see a bit of sun because yeah, <laughs> usually you it rains every day for yeah. sure <laughs> we've had floodings yeah. the past few weeks yes because, yeah. but, uh, i looked at the forecast like right before we traveled here and it had said i thought that it was gonna rain like every day and maybe it has like rained like a little bit every day but mm. i feel like we've gotten pretty lucky like it's been sunny like most have, days yeah. that we've been here your shower is is a, well common but uh you've had some dry spells quite quite, yeah. quite a lot of them but yeah. um what, what's what's the weather like back at your place in India. Is it quite similar? I've heard it's quite similar. Yeah. It's similar. It's very uh, right, bipolar. Right before we left yeah. our hometown, or where our school is at, got four inches of snow. No way. We drive to classes and everything, and yeah. it's very scary. Mm. And But this time of the year is snow, snow, snow. Really? Yeah. And some sun. We do get some sunny days. I think this, like... In this time of year right now, it's very it goes very back and forth. Mm-hmm. So like we'll get a lot of snow like one day, and then like two days later it's gone because it like melts and the sun comes out. Mm. So it'll be like snow, then you'll get some sun, and then it'll rain a little bit, and then it'll get really cold. So the rain freezes, and then like yeah. it's icy out. And I'm just ready for all of that to be done and it to start going into spring. Like I'd rather just have rain. I just don't like snow. Because it's dangerous, like yeah. she said, it's dangerous, it like driving. It like, Especially driving. I, yeah, I, agree. I don't like, dri- like when it starts snowing in Muncie, like I walk everywhere. Like yes. I won't drive my car. Exactly. How, how far do you live from campus if you if you drive there? Mm-hmm. Are you just being lazy or is it walkable? <laughs> uh, mine's, mine is not walkable. Okay. My new apartment complex is about 10 minutes away from campus. So okay. we do have a bus that takes us there, yeah, but yeah. not walkable. No. no. I live right next to campus, like literally like right on the edge okay. next to the dorms. Mm-hmm. So I walk to class anyway. Like mm-hmm. I don't drive to campus. Yeah. yeah. It takes me like five minutes to get to class. Oh, there we go. So. That's quite convenient. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You walk, don't you? You walk to campus. I do. Yeah. Most mm-hmm. times. I don't uh, leave the house without my umbrella though. Uh, <laughs> any advice <laughs> I give to someone moving to Wales is uh, to buy an umbrella. Yeah, okay. yes. My umbrella broke and I was drenched for about a couple wow. days until I got a new umbrella. But I don't leave it without my umbrella. Yeah. <laughs> After yeah. a day of being here, I was like, I should probably buy an umbrella i mm. haven't yet but yeah. i was thinking like it might be a good idea mm. to just it's buy a must. cheap one while yeah. i'm here mm. <laughs> but you, you've come on the right time then if you're avoiding the snow back at home so um, yes. yes you won't you won't get four inches snow um this time of year hopefully yeah. um, but uh yeah. well will you be going back for s- to snow will it be still snowing or? Oh, well. i don't know i think that <laughs> I heard, <laughs> I heard that like the last, maybe just yesterday, but I heard the weather was really nice like recently, like the last few days. It was days, 60. Maybe. No, it was 50. I think it was 50 degrees yesterday at home. Fahrenheit. Yeah. <laughs> Fire, Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Yes. But yeah. yeah, so it was pretty warm. So the snow should be gone then unless mm. it snows back, again yeah, it back, yeah. before mm. we leave yeah. Sunday. I think it feels like it does right now here. So pretty yeah. warm, oh. decent. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Mm. But about the trip, we'll move from the weather, okay. move on from the weather. And, um, I'm just going straight in there and ask ask both of you what's been your highlight so far. I know you're, you're, the trip is far from finished, oh, but what's been your highlight so far? For me, go one hundred percent. Talk about that. That was <laughs> so much fun. I've never been to anything like that. I literally had the time of my life there. Mm-hmm. Like I will never forget Super fun. that. It was so much fun. Like and every, I mean. Obviously, you have a couple of people here and there who like aren't friendly, but for the most part, like we had such a great experience there mm. with each other, and it was just cool seeing everyone bond over something that we yeah. all were like experiencing for the first time. Yeah. It was so much fun. I don't know why we don't have that in America. There's a gap I would in the market back at home yeah. for you. Yeah, Dylan, um, <laughs> Dylan Thompson, and Ryan Klimchak yeah. um, in our group are gonna bring that back to America. They say, and they're gonna make a killing off of oh, it. Oh, they so. will. <laughs> 
It was so much fun, though. Lots of dancing yeah. on the tables. Oh, yeah. Lots of dancing. Absolutely. I loved that every time that they called the number 17, it was like 17 Dancing, dancing Queen. queen. Yeah. yeah. It was I great. Because I love Mamma Mia. Yeah. And I love ABBA. So, like, that was so much fun. But it's a, it it's a good workout because I've been a few times and you're, you're there ticking all the numbers off and bang, music comes on. you got to jump up quite quickly, don't you, to catch the song. And yeah. then you're yeah. back down, you're back up, you're back down. It was a workout. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah. big workout big going workout. to Bingo Lingo. But do you play Bingo back at, in the States at all or is that something new for I you? I mean, I don't think there's anything like that kind of a bingo. Our bingo is different. Our bingo's like Very for different. old people. Yeah. Like you go to with your like grandma and you yeah. get like the the ink ones that have the cap okay. on it and like it like yeah. it dots. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, talking yeah. about? I know, I know. Yeah, and I mean, it's nothing like that. No. Like you wouldn't get like <laughs> prizes no. or anything. Or, or, or they'd music be like or coupons shit, or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the bingo has like B-I-N-G-O across the top of it. Yeah. And then each row has just numbers. There's no, there's no free spaces no. like that one. Yeah, like the bingo, I don't know if that's just like how you guys do bingo or if that's just how bingo lingo does bingo. Yeah, like, that it's was just different. bingo lingo. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. I was going to say like yeah. that's, that was just like different. But, it took us forever to figure it out too. We were all trying to sit in there like, how do you yeah. even do this? B- bingo Lingo is a company and it goes around popular cities in the UK. Oh, okay. So, so I don't know. Every Friday, I think it's in Cardiff, more or less every Friday, or maybe other wow. every other. But sometimes it's in I don't know Manchester, Glasgow, Edinburgh, uh, wow. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so I did tour. not know that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And they get guests and stuff like that. Wow. Yeah, it but, is crazy. And even like because Alex Cartman, one of our professors, he got a bingo. And um, he went up on stage. I don't know if you guys heard about this, but like no. he went up on stage and it was like a tie. Someone else had gotten a bingo and okay. they were both right. Sing They're off. like, oh, you have to sing a song and try to get the crowd to sing along. So you're um, automatically you're thinking in your head, like, you've got to sing like some song that these oh, people no, are going to Sweet heard. Caroline. <laughs> See, like, I would have sang Mamma Mia. Yeah. I, that's just what came to my head. And he said that Bohemian Rhapsody came to his head, but he did right. it. He couldn't remember how it started. That's fair. Oh. So. The song that he chose to belt out to everyone was the U.S. National Anthem. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> and, oh. Like at first, there was a couple people like singing along. Obviously, we were singing along with him, trying to support him. But then you just it's hear a big the booze yeah. yes. coming <laughs> everywhere. In. I don't remember what the other guy sang, but I don't think it would have mattered at that point. Like he was gonna win. Such no. a good story. Yeah. Wow. Um, what about you? What's it? What's been your um, oh man? Highlight, Rachel? You know I. I would say Bingo Lingo was it, but I'm going to go with, so this morning, honestly, I'm so tired right now. Our trip mm. has been so long, but so fantastic. So I can only think of this moment, but I, this morning, I, growing up, I always had a tea set. Okay. So I always had tea, but over in America, we don't necessarily drink tea. We drink a lot of coffee. Not like you guys. Not it's like, like iced tea. Iced tea with at like McDonald's. a lot of sugar in it. I probably drink more iced tea than normal tea. <laughs> yeah. I know it's very yeah. traditional for English people to drink tea, but I only really drink it socially. Like, do you yeah. drink tea? I, I, I don't drink yeah. tea. I don't, I've never drunk huh. tea. No, it's yeah. just coffee. I like bottled tea. I think it's like, more a stereotype fruity. that British people just drink tea every morning. Yes, so, yes. I no, mean, it some was. people do, but yeah. Yeah. But yeah. we don't have anything. We don't. I always, yeah, I always dreamed of drinking tea out of a coffee, like out of a teapot, yeah, like yeah. actually pouring my own tea. Oh, nice. And this morning, and we always have, we have like little English uh, cafes that do that where you can go get a teapot. But this morning I had tea over here in Wales. And oh. so I think that was, I don't know. It was just it's one of those touch. moments. She yeah. was super excited too. Like I was. I, she had me take pictures of her. It was like a nice, like <laughs> it was like a fancy little, like nice, like porcelain, like oh, tea nice. set. Yeah. Like, uh, so I would say that it was that. one of my many highlights, but I just it's thought little, that was yeah. so neat. Where, so neat. Where did you get tea? Where, where was it? Oh, that was, what is that? <sighs> in town or? It was in, is it Landau? Oh yeah, Landau. Yeah, over yeah. the other campuses. And there was in the campus. A little tea room there. Okay. It was up by the cathedral. Oh, in the village yes oh, oh um, my goodness was it uh, no said in demon was it it's a white building that's all um, i know that's all i, I want to say juniper um juno lounge yes it's, it I was think juno it was lounge. That. yes yeah I it must it have been juno so lounge. it's nice though i got I the lemon it. cheesecake Lovely. there it was very good it sounds but good. my experience there i ordered a mint milkshake i didn't know wow. that there's a difference between a milkshake and an ice cream milkshake. Like I didn't know that was two different things. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking that I'm gonna receive like a mint, like ice cream, like milkshake, and mm. I literally got like kind of like mint flavored milk. <laughs> no way. <laughs> it wasn't bad. I drank it. It was like okay. I don't know if it was like sweet milk or just like like a creamer type of thing. Mm. It was good, but 
I mean, it wasn't what I was it. expecting. No. She gave it to me in like a hot chocolate like type of cup and like like a coffee cup. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, that's not how you, you didn't expect that. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh okay. Cool. And then I saw on the menu milkshake ice cream milkshake. And I'm like, oh, oh, I didn't realize that was like a different thing. Yeah, it is. We <laughs> well, it's we just that's just. Yeah, ice I mean, cream I've milkshake had and milkshake. Ice cream milkshakes. <laughs> times, I guess. Ice cream milkshakes are really good, but you generally it's just sort of milkshakes, really, which is just sort of flavored milk. And, oh yeah. wow! Yeah, I, I mean, just, it wasn't bad. It was yeah, good. It, it's good. Yeah. It's like refreshing drink. Like whenever I have a just a normal milkshake, I tend to drink it really. It goes down so quickly. Yeah. But an ice cream milkshake, it's more of you can take. It's your like time a. Pu- it's more it. like a dessert. It's dessert, like isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. But um. We'll finish off with a quiz, shall we? Okay. We've quizzed everyone so far, and I think Rob, oh, Rob's going to lead this. Um, yeah, go, go ahead, Rob. Yeah, so this is my one. So I'm basically going to give you um, a Welsh word and <laughs> an Elvish word, and you've got to uh, say which one is which. Do you want which, me to pronounce the Welsh words? Yeah, I'll need that. Okay. I'm English, so I don't. <laughs> it's a Welsh so word, I will and need... I'll... So, so what? We'll give you the English word, is that right? Okay. Yeah, we'll okay. give you the English and word. And you need to decide whether... We'll give you two different words. Okay. And you need to predict or guess which one is the Welsh word for the English word we give you. Oh, my. Oh, okay. Does that I get make it. sense? Yeah. Okay. So you're going to so, give us an English word and then you're going to give us like options yes, for the Welsh word? Yes, yeah. we will. Oh, okay. my. Okay. So, okay. for example, the first word is microwave. Okay. Oh, poverty ping. Isn't that you right? You know it. Well, it's yeah. And I was, we were going to say, <laughs> is it poverty <laughs> ping? Broke yeah. Game. yeah. Oh. Or. <laughs> Or, um, that's the one word I've learned over here is poverty ping. Well, I guess like she might be good at this. No, yeah. no, that was the only word I've learned. So. Yeah. Oh, I think that's one nil, Rachel. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this Sorry. Is funny, Sorry right? I ruined the game. I ruined Sorry, the Jordan, game. but I think well, Rachel, Rachel's I got that. Yeah. Oh, butterfly. Do you know the word for butterfly, Rachel? <laughs> no, I do not. Well, it's, no. it's it's either pili pala, okay, or firith. Firith. I'm gonna go with pili pala. I'm okay. gonna go with the other one, F- Ferith, Phyllis, something like that. It's actually Pilpella. Yeah, it's nice. Pilipala. Okay. okay. Pilipala. Ferith. <laughs> yeah. Ferith is actually the Elvish word for fading. Okay. Um, fading. When Dav asked me to do this, I went to the Elvish for inspiration because uh, they're a bit like Welsh people. Isn't Elvish okay. the, la- okay. uh, the language in Lord of the Rings? It's the language. Of the Rings. <laughs> oh, thought, okay. okay. I thought okay. Welsh people are similar because they live in valleys and they love dragons. So. <laughs> they do love dragons. Yeah. I've realised that. <laughs> Very proud of that. Mm. Um, the third word you need to guess is the Welsh word for spring. Oh gosh. Okay. Do you want to give your word first? Uh. If you will. If you will. Or Gwanwin. I'm uh, going the first one. If, if you will. If you do will. I have to pick the other one or can I pick the other one? No, no you, you can, can pick the same. You can do whatever you like. Uh, oh, jeez. I'll pick the other one. Gwanwin. Yeah. It's Gwanwin, isn't it? It is. It is <laughs> Gwanwin. <laughs> wow, I am. So the comeback's on, isn't Man. it? It's a 2 1 for. Yeah. For okay, you. it's tied up. Ooh. Go on, Rob. So the next one is the word for dwarf. <laughs> Okay. okay. Is it Korach or Naugrim? Yeah, is it Korach or Naugrim? Mm. For dwarf. Um, the first one. I'm going to I'm going to say the first one as well. Kor- K- yeah, Korach. Kor- Korach. Korach, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Korach. Okay. Korach. Okay. Korach okay. Is correct. Okay. Korach is dwarf okay. in Welsh. Um and the last one uh, the word for sister is it Gwathel or Chwair? Yeah, is it oh. Chwair or Gwathel? Uh, oh for my! Sister. Okay. Chwair. Chwair. That's what I pick. Chwair. 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 Was that better? Yeah. Okay. Or was that good? Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's like okay. a little Chwair. That reminds oh. me of like a French, like a. <laughs> yeah, it's a. <laughs> But they're correct, aren't they? Yeah. Wow, yeah. Hey, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. It go. was a good effort. That was okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what was the score. Was I think it three I won. Or four she won. Jordan won. Sure Jordan won. won. Well, yeah. well done. <laughs> Especially because Rachel got the first one without us giving any options. Yeah. But yeah. That was a good effort. It sounds like what it does because uh, poppy ping. I was thinking popcorn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know any well other Welsh words out of interest? Have you picked up on anything? Any? Well, the only one, the only phrase that I've heard is the like the yucky dog. Oh, yucky dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, good health yeah. or um, cheers, yeah. basically. Oh, Joe yeah. was saying that yeah. Yeah, uh, when, we, when people were getting a half pint yeah. the other day. Oh, nice. Like, yeah. 
Dioch. Okay? Have you heard Dioch? That's thank you. I've seen that. I've yeah. seen it. Everything here has the translation yeah, yeah. to underneath it, and it, I've seen that. But um, no, thank you guys for coming on. Thank you both of for course. being here. Um, it's been, it's been fun. Fun. Um, but we'll uh, get another pair on, shall we? Yep. To finish off this sounds podcast. Good. Yes, so, sounds you. good. Right. Thanks, Dio. Okay, so to finish off podcast, Faith and Olivia have joined us to finish off. And, um, well, have you enjoyed your trip so far since arriving on Thursday? Yeah, it's been great. Um, the hospitality here has been amazing. Every single day we wake up, we have something new to explore. And, I mean, just part uh, partnering with uh, Cardamet University has been great. Every, like, Joe has been amazing on giving us an itinerary and being like, this is what you guys are going to do today. And then we're flexible with it as well. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's been pretty awesome. There's a lot more to see just in within Cardiff as compared to, like, back at home you have to go pretty far to see interesting things so yeah. it's really cool that it's all like in one place yeah well i guess it is, is it is wales is such a small country i mean yeah. cardiff is a tiny city um very small city absolutely like i'm from london i used to live in london so i and it's still like a massive city there's still so much i need to explore in london i feel but mm. wales like you can walk anywhere you can get to anywhere yeah you wanna go, and yeah you can walk yeah. from one side of cardiff to the other and quite yeah. quite easily you can't do that in london obviously no. um <laughs> What's your expect? Well, your expect expectations of Wales has it been fulfilled, or what, what are you expecting coming over here? Basically, that's what I'm trying to ask. In so before um, Chris Taylor told us about this uh, partnership or that we have the opportunity to come over here, I had no idea what Wales was, yeah. or I've never heard of it, never looked into it, anything like that. And so when I looked into it, everything just looked beautiful stuff like that and the first day we showed up like it blew my expectations away that's good to hear uh, and yourself yeah i feel like i had definitely like heard the name before just yeah. because you know it's it's like a whale and like yeah. it yeah, sticks yeah. out yeah. so yeah. <laughs> yeah like we i i heard of it so like it's a memorable name i think but i definitely didn't know anything about it and mm. then my expectations were that it was going to be a whole lot different from american mm. like just the way that it's set up like maybe not the culture but just like everything about the city like I thought it would look a whole lot different from what we have but really like besides the roads and everything and like kind of the structural stuff it's kind of set up the same as like a big city would be at home mm-hmm. well that's interesting and well obviously you're, you're sort of a not tourist but a visitor yeah, yeah. you're from um, England obviously but what's the difference between not Wales and England but maybe Cardiff and London you've mentioned briefly earlier but what else um, it's a lot cheaper. Definitely. Is it cheaper? Yeah. Um, well, from in, London. In yeah. London, you're spending like five pound on a pint, and uh, here you spend <laughs> about three pound. So mm. it's it's very good here in that kind of way. Um, obviously, the people are different. It's weird walking into a pub and they're celebrating England conceding a goal, mm. and obviously supporting Wales. Like the the fans here are very passionate about that, and they're quite anti English. Mm. I found out, which I was a bit surprised about, to be honest. And. Uh, it is different, but uh, the culture, the people, is pretty similar. We all, we all get on, and I fit in well. I think. Yeah, yeah. you fit in. <laughs> but what about you guys? Is it cheaper over here in Wales, or well, I... we've been just gone through Brexit, haven't we? It's gone a bit more expensive. But in the states, is it is it cheaper or more expensive than than Wales? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. When you, I sometimes I just do the conversion after I buy things here because I'm just curious. Curious, yeah, you would be. Yeah. And I feel like it's about the same, but when it comes to like pound land like we have something like that called like the dollar store okay it's the same thing but like after you do the math like you if you were to buy like the same thing like i bought some band-aids yesterday okay like if i was to buy that here it was a pound but then it goes to like almost two dollars in american dollars so which would be two pounds yeah yeah so it's a little bit more i think when you do the conversion Mm. but some things i think are cheaper as far as it goes in pounds Mm. Yeah, like for sure. When we go out to eat and stuff like that and you look at the menu, it's only like you can get a meal for like six pounds. But like I went to the bank yesterday to like exchange more money and like the conversion rate was like 1.41 something. So like even though it looks like it's cheaper when we see six pounds, it's still like... After the conversion. Conversion, it's it's a little bit more expensive, but like it's about the same of what you would pay in America. So it... Like at the time you think you're getting a deal, but then when you actually look at it from like a 
our type of money, it's mm. like about the same. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's much difference. I, I wouldn't have thought there would be much difference between the States and here. But um, anyway, let's talk about well, less talk about money, more about what have you guys been up to. I mean, we've spoke about the others. Um, what stood out for you and what, 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 what was the best experience so far? I know your trip hasn't finished, it's far from finished yet, but um, what's been the best experience so far for you guys? Oh, wow, that's a hard question. Um, I really enjoyed whenever we went toward the castle. The it castle. was walking distance from where we were staying, and it was raining on that day, but it it was still beautiful. Like, we have nothing like that around where we're from, mm. and so just to go and see the history there and yeah. everything like that. Like, we all brought our cameras and went out filming it, but that was probably the one of the best, and it was towards the beginning of the trip, so it just set the standards high from there. <laughs> yeah, uh, one thing that stands out to me is, like, you can walk in any restaurant here and it's going to be good and like it doesn't <laughs> always happen at home. And then obviously like there's beaches not too far from mm. here. Like it's on like the, the sea and the ocean. There's like bays and the closest thing we have in certain places is like the Ohio River mm. and stuff yeah. like that, like creeks and rivers and all that. So that's pretty interesting. And then I have noticed too how like just the whole landscape is a lot more green than it is at home. Like it's just, I don't know, there's a whole lot of natural beauty here. Oh, that's, that's great, great hearing that. But yeah. um, we'll we'll finish off the, our little segment with um, a quiz, shall we? I know you've been to a few stadiums. You've been to the Principality mm-hmm. and Swaylek this morning. Um, the first few questions are about the capacity. And I know you probably would have been told the capacity, you know, if you're listening or not. We'll see about that. Um, oh but we'll, st- <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll start off with the Swaylek Stadium. So this morning, this should be fresh in your minds. <laughs> it's a tester. Um, what's the cap- capacity of the Swaylek Stadium? Is it fifteen point five thousand, twelve point five thousand, or seventeen point five thousand? So are we it's, both answering this? Yeah, it's, is it it's vers- Yeah, it's it's versus each other. So we'll 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 score you. And there's going to be a winner after. It's C. I know that. C. Is it 17.5 thousand? Yes, that is, that's right. I'm going to have to uh, agree with her because I didn't even go there this morning. I'm confident. So. Well, C. you're both wrong. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh where'd he go? It's 15.5 thousand. <laughs> it's 15 and a half thousand. <laughs> you Your that. alumni, he told us that it was whoever we met gave us a tour and he said. Was it 17? Did he, he say 17? Said, oh, right. Well, it was. Blame, blame I remember him, that. Him, yeah, blame him. But yeah. it said on Wikipedia it was 15.5. Yes. You're looking at Wikipedia. But that wasn't always yeah. Wikipedia, which isn't always reliable. <laughs> Should we give him half a point? Half a point. Half a yeah, point. If he told you it was 17. I'll take it. Half a point. Half, half a point. <laughs> but we're going to go much bigger now. We're going to our national stadium that you visited on Sunday or Monday, I believe. And um, what's the capacity of the Principality Stadium, the big rugby stadium? Okay. Um, is it. 82,000, 78,000, or 75,000. So 75, 78, or 82,000. I'm going to go with B. 78. 78? Whichever one that was. Oh, both B. of you are correct. Yeah, you get Ooh. points for that. 78,000. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> ah, that's good going. 1. Well 5. done. <laughs> um, we'll go smaller, but you visited this stadium and you watched the Bluebirds, Cardiff City, play um, mm-hmm. on Saturday. I think they played Brentford. I think didn't they? Mm-hmm. Um, but what's the capac- capacity of CCFC, the Cardiff City Football Stadium? Is it thirty-three thousand? Is it forty thousand? Or is it twenty-five thousand? Can you imagine yourself sitting there and how many people would fit in that arena? They told us, but I don't. Remember. Yeah, can you repeat that I, one more time? Yeah, sure. Um, is it twenty-five thousand, thirty-three, or forty? I'm going to go with 33. 33? I know it's 33 or 40, but I'm going to go with 40 just to be different. Mix it up. What's the scores at the moment? Is it 1.5 yes. points each? We're yeah. tied. Okay. It is 33,000. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> Let's it's, go. yeah, you take the lead with 2.5 points. And there's only one question left. And it's an open question. Um, Joe told me to stick this in because I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie. I didn't know the answer to this quest- question this morning, but Joe told me. Ask them this. They were told this this morning. Test them. So I said, okay. After a visit to the Swaylek this morning, do you know how was the Ashes Trophy named? Oh, after? Yes. The. So can I go should first? we go? I know. Yeah, it. Olivia, you can go. F- well, if you, well, do you know it? No, I, <laughs> I, I didn't get to attend that this morning. Oh no, you didn't. Oh, I'm sorry. I well, know this the is, this is very unfair then. But uh, well, yeah, Olivia, you can take it. 
She might still get it wrong, though. <laughs> she might. The English, I believe it was the English, because they, they overreact when they lose. They burned. Always. The, are they called wickets? <laughs> the wickets? Is that what they're called? They yes. burned those after yeah. they lost. And then Which they took the ashes. ashes. Yeah. Correct. Well done, Olivia. Yay. But because you weren't there, that's very unfair. I won't give a point to you. I'm sorry. But uh, how about we just tie now? Yeah. Like, okay. Oh, yeah. That's so that would be a tie. Yeah. yeah. Let's let's call it a tie. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 should do that. Have the incinerated remains of a bit of an equipment as the trophy. Like, yeah. In baseball, just like a burnt up ball. Or, <laughs> a or, burnt or, up bat. A, yeah. A burnt up bat, or in American football, some burnt up helmet or pads and something. <laughs> but would no. You, would yeah. you go along with that? <laughs> yeah. But well done. Well, then you. Thank well, you. I, I didn't you. know that this morning. So, Joe, I, I've learned something new. Um, and enjoy the rest of your trip. Thank you for coming in for the podcast. Um, it's been Dav Doug here, and I've been with Rob Wheeler from Cardiff Met Sport Radio. Thank you. Diochem Rando, thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Brilliant. That was good. Yeah. I knew that. <laughs>